Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with the Grammy nominated Noah Cyrus. Noah, how are you? I am so good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, congratulations. Your first Grammy nomination. I am definitely so grateful and I'm just like excited to be recognized for the music that I'm making. And, you know, um, that's being nominated and recognized for what I'm writing and the music that I love is just something that I'm so grateful for and excited for. And there's, there's so many amazing women in the category too, that just being next to them that like, you know, that's like an amazing accomplishment right there is just being next to like the names that I'm next to. So I'm so happy and excited and just rooting for everybody. How did you uh, get the news? Did you get a phone call, a text? How did you find out about the nomination? I got a phone call from my mom and I was, I was asleep in New York and um i'm usually sleeping when i get news like good or bad people always call me and wake me up and it's just like super scary because you don't know what you're gonna get yet yeah um but my mom alexa my best friend woke me up and she was like your mom's calling and it was my mom and my manager and they were on like group facetime and my mom was like oh can i tell her can i tell her and my mom's so bad at, she's the worst person like at telling like don't tell this person or don't tell this like this is top secret like you know don't go to tish cyrus for that information because she will go blurt it to everyone so she was like you're nominated for grammy she could not wait to you know tell me and you know she did not give zach a chance to say it and she just wanted to get it out and honestly like getting the news from my mom was just like the perfect scenario because my mom's with me through so much and just supports me through everything and just since i was so young my mom and i've had such a special connection so to get the news from my mom made it even more like surreal and um just a big moment just because hearing it from my mom made it like 10 times emotional because we just have such a great bond and you know she took me to my very first meeting with management and you know, my very first studio session in a real studio. Um, and my mom has really just been there every step of the way and, um, you know, has always been there to give me that boost of confidence whenever I've needed it and don't have it in myself. And so, yeah, that, that was, that was probably my favorite moment of getting the news was getting it from my mom. So would you say, um, I mean, you're talking so, so highly of your mom. Are you more of a mama's girl or a daddy's girl? No, 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 no. Okay. So everybody's like, I can't even like the thought of saying one or the other, like actually makes no, me. No, no, no. It, it doesn't mean favorite. It just means like, you know, when, when you I have to hit the like, panic button, who do you call first? Oh, my mom. <laughs> okay. So because my mom's more of like. You go to my mom for like the, this is what's going on. Like, how do we, she's a go-getter and she, I don't know. Mom is always right. Something about moms, they're just always right. And she knows it. And so I just always go to mom for everything. And, um, you know, I'm definitely a daddy's girl in the way that like, I could, my dad and I are just so close. And like, if mom says no, you go to dad because he'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part of parenting, playing, you know, right? For my mom, it's like, oh, because then she becomes like the the bad guy in, yeah. in, in the situation. She's like, this is so unfair. Um, so y your music is fantastic. And it, it's probably... <laughs> Again, you know, some people would see you as a new artist, which is the category that you're nominated in. But there are so many people who have been enjoying your music and what you've been putting out for several years. I mean, it was back in 2017 that I believe you were nominated, not nominated, but uh, Time Magazine put you as like one of the 30 most influential teens. I, it was 2017. It was that was mind blowing to me, you know, because um, I always felt like. You know, I had a hard time growing up with social media and being seen in the public eye. And I think to know that I actually was an influence for young adults or teens, that that really meant a lot to me at the time and still does, you know, um, that, you know, I was able to help anybody in, in a hard time or, you know, to speak out about my mental health, you know, if that helps anybody with 
speaking out with theirs or getting the help they need, uh, you know, to know that I actually was carrying any influence for young adults and teens, you know, was, I, I was filled with so much gratitude. I would imagine uh, 2020 was a great bag of fun for you. <laughs> Yeah. Having a pandemic while already struggling with anxiety and depression, um, you know, how did how did you struggle with that, deal with it, and use your voice to help other people during the pandemic? You know, I think Instagram was a huge platform for a lot of people during this time, and it still is, and I think we've been able to use Instagram from what I've seen out of it for the most po positive ways that I've ever seen from Instagram. If I was to ever say that I got something positive or there's a positive thing to not just Instagram, just social media, it would just be the, the information that we're able to bring to others and awareness that we're able to bring to others through social media. Um, you know, but 2020 itself personally, you know, I would have liked to speak out a lot more about where I was in 2020 at the time personally, but it really was such a hard year for me um, in losing my grandma in quarantine and not seeing her for six months prior. And um, really, it made me realize a lot of things and made me made me really learn the way of I love yous and I and goodbyes and the way of of, of family and the people around you, the real people around you that, that really love you at the end of the day, when there is nothing, everything is stripped back, who is really there. And it really, you know, I, I'm shaking talking about it because, you know, talking about losing my grandma is really hard, but in, in the big picture, there was a really big lesson learned of 2020 that I, I've grown so much from and I've learned so much from. And if you were to have talked to me and we have had this conversation, I would say February of 2020, you would be talking to a completely different mindset of mine. And I think there were just a lot of, you know, terrible things that I did, I did not think I was going to have to face in 2020 that I did. And it really made me wake up. Music, a, a lot of people are able to take the manic sides of emotions, the real high highs and the low lows. And those are two great things to write about, right? That's when pen to paper. Um, which one flows easiest out of you? The lows or the highs when it comes to making music? The lows. That's That's an easy thing for me. And I think it's just... You know, it, it was a, it was kind of like a joke in my family. Like, you know, uh, Trace always will come up to me and be like, come on, punk, why are you so emo? Like, I've always been like the emo kid of the family, quote unquote. And, you know, like Miley always, you know, was making it. We always thought it was so funny that when I was like eight years old, I was dressing up as in like black dresses with black lipstick for Halloween. And like, I just always was like this, like, it was just funny. And as a kid, I'd listen to, you know, Metro Station because I was my brother's biggest fan and always wanted to be at their concerts. And so, I don't know, I just kind of always was the type to keep to myself. And, and I really love, I love hard and I feel really, really deep and passionate about things. And if you were to speak to, you know, my mom or anybody, that would be the first thing they tell you is that, when I, when I feel something, I really feel it. And so, you know, I think the lows, unfortunately, I hate to say that I sometimes I am the glass half empty type sometimes because the lows are the, are, are the ones that stick out to me and my life because I have dealt with depression and I have, I deal with it every single day, every single night. It's a battle. When I go to sleep every single day, when I wake up, you know, it's a battle. Every, I have therapy 20 minutes after this, this session. So I, uh, I, you know, I can't stress enough how important, you know, yeah, trying to turn around my mental health is, but I would say that for me, I, I get the most help from music whenever it's, uh, an emotional record or it's a real raw record with, with pain. And I think that's a really easy way of getting to know someone is, is through vulnerability. And, and that's a really tough thing for me to do. And whenever it comes to writing, I, it, it's really easy for me to be vulnerable. 
Well, let's talk about um, your writing partner, PJ. Hey. PJ Harding. I mean, like this, this has been the collaboration that keeps on giving because obviously you guys work together with your song July uh, and your most recent single came out, uh, Dear August. And it turns out it wasn't just the one. And you guys kept dabbling together and like, thank goodness, because you're a, a great cohesive partner. Um, is it a big yin yang? Is, is he emo too? Or is he balancing you out? How's it work? You know what? We, PJ does always bring a sense of hope to everything. He's a very hopeful person and he brings a lot of hope into my life. And that's something that he, he was like a, honestly, like a ray of light coming into my life, genuinely. And we write so much about, you know, our sad tunes. And yeah, he's a little, he's emo. He likes sad music, you know, and I, who, who doesn't love like a good sad song, but. A good cry. Oh, oh I said it. A good cry. Actually, a fun fact about that is PJ, we had met whenever I went to Bali. I think it was now two years ago, and I wrote July with PJ, and that's when we really, really met. But I actually went to the same writing camp a year before, and that's where I wrote Good Cry, and PJ is actually playing the guitar on Good Cry. And we needed a guitar player that was that was at the writing camp, and Tushar just said, PJ, PJ and I barely really talked. He just came in, played the guitar, whatever. And the next year is whenever we really bonded. And that's just something really cool is that he's actually been a part of my the ride since yeah. I was way younger. And it's really cool. And, um, you know, writing Dear August was so fun and a, a letter to, you know, the future. And I think that's probably, honestly, the most positive song, if you want to put it that way that I've written in a while because it is like a letter of hope. It is a letter to the future. And, you know, um, after writing, not just July, uh, PJ and I wrote the end of everything on my album, young and sad. We wrote, um, I got so high. Um, if I, I feel like there's more, but I don't, I don't even know, but the, the list goes on and on. And I think what's amazing about PJ and I is after creating our project, which we just dropped our first of six songs, um, we don't want, we, it's not stopping there. You know, I was on FaceTime with PJ yesterday and we just wrote a beautiful song that I can't wait to, you know, put that on my album and um, that I'm working on now. And it honestly, I really just met my match whenever it comes to writing. And it's just something that comes so easy and something that is something that is so beautiful. Like we write about all these beautiful tragedies in, in our life and, and our loss losses and our heartbreaks. And it's also vulnerable, but there's all this one little bit, a hint of hope within everything that we write. The, the new song, Dear August has a beautiful music video, which is great because you would think that you guys are together, but because of quarantine, it's totally shot. You're, you're not even together, but it seems very cohesive. Um, but it's, it's an homage to the movie, The Notebook, because uh, there's the blue dress, there's the old timey cars, there's the love letters. Are you obsessed with The Notebook? I am obsessed with The Notebook. And when we were, you know, on our call brainstorming about music videos, I said, honestly, the only thing that I've been seeing as a music video is the notebook. And they, it was kind of like crickets over the phone for a second. And I felt kind of stupid. And then I was like, no, I, I know, a, I know, I know my brain. And like, if this, this is, this is going to work. Like, I know that this is like the idea. And so I had watched The Notebook a few times and I'm the type of person whenever I'm feeling sad, I kind of like torture myself. And <laughs> so I was watching The Notebook and it was re reminding me of Dear August and whenever she was on the side of the road crying from this letter, it actually reminded me of something that I've recently went through with, you know, something a lot more modern with a text message, but there's been, you know, uh, a lot of things that I actually could relate to her in that movie. And so I, I just, you know, stuck with that idea. And I thought, why not ask PJ what he thinks of it? And it really turned into this beautiful music video that honestly quite turned into a movie. Um, and it kind of felt like that when we were shooting it. And what's so insane is that PJ and I did this whole project and everything while he was in Australia and I'm here. So 
writing was over FaceTime or Zooms or um, the video. He's all the way in Australia, which he it's beautiful on his video. I was like, where did you shoot this Wonderland? Like you look, it's so fucking pretty. Excuse me, but it was so pretty where he where he shot the video, and so you know everything just worked out and felt right and to place perfectly how it should. Which I think you know honestly everything that has to do with PJ and I with music and everything just falls into place perfectly. Um, not to keep dwelling on the love letter stuff, <laughs> but I love the movie. Um, have you ever written, handwritten a love letter? I have. Yes, I have. But also that was, that's a big thing for like me and my dad. My dad's a big letter guy. So he mm-hmm. leaves little letters on like the coffee pot for my mom or little drawings or things so my dad you know we loved getting each other cards that's kind of our thing for everything we get each other a card and he puts a lot of work into his cards he likes the really funny cards that usually have something to do with like a grandpa farting or something like he's so he's so gross and so I he will get me cards and my mom cards and we'll write little letters to each other just for even he'll just if we're at CVS get someone a card and we write them little letters so writing little letters to each other is something that we do pretty often but um I have written a a love letter yes I have done that because I think that adds a bit of like personal value to something and that's something that you be you're able to keep forever no matter where the person goes in life or where you're going to be in life you always have that you know kind of like a tattoo (laughs) yes exactly um Want to play a game? Yes. Let's play a game. Let's go ahead and do rock and tell. This is show and tell, but with much cooler stuff, rock memorabilia. No, Cyrus, what do you have to show us today? Okay, so mine look really weird and random, but they're actually really cute. I want to start with my Frozen um, toys. I got this from a fan at my show at the... I want to say the Roxy was at my last show. Um, She came all the way from Japan to give them to me. And she's come to all of my LA shows and we take a picture every time. And this time she brought me my frozen toys and I keep them. Um, I have a really old school seventies. It's like a redone record player in my bedroom and I keep them sitting on the record player. Um, because though it's redone, I dropped it while moving and I broke it and I just haven't really gotten it redone again. And so I keep these sitting on there and every time I look at them, they just make me happy and make me smile. And they were the last, they're from the last show that I performed, um, which was a day before the lockdown. So, you know, they hold like a lot of, I don't know. Are you a uh, Frozen 1 or Frozen 2 girl? Frozen, well, Frozen 1 was my everything until gateway drug <laughs> until frozen two came and it and it just like blew me out of the out of the entire like movie theater at the time i literally looked at my best friend lucas and i was crying and i, and I was like her riding on the horse is me <laughs> he was like what are you talking about i was like that's me i was like i feel connected to her so i don't know there's something about frozen actually i'm gonna show you um I have like these like streamer things hanging up back oh, there. Oh yeah. And on the other side, it's from my birthday and I actually haven't taken them down because I don't want to. And it's like a big frozen like birthday party thing that I got from Walmart before my birthday that was just me and my best friend. But oh, amazing. All right, right. Item number two for Rock and Tell with Noah Cyrus. Okay, number two is my Beats pill and it is really actually so special to me because it was the very first time my nails, I'm so humiliated. (laughs) It was the first, first, like, we were doing this, I think it was for Apple. Well, it was definitely for Apple. It was for Apple and we were doing this Make Me Cry, how we made it in the studio and all of this stuff. And um, it was with Beats and Beats brought me this pill and I don't know, something about it was like, oh, this is my first time like doing one of these. And it was just so special. Like I'd always thought, you know, you see beats in every music video, they get the placement and everything. And I was finally doing something with beats. And I don't know, I've gotten many beats pills since, but this is like my favorite one because I've literally had it since I was um, 15 or 16. I think I was 16. And so it's been through 
breakups. It's been through living at my mom's house to two of my own houses now. It's been on tour. You can kind of see it's kind of gone through hell. And yeah. Hell. Um, it's gone through hell and back. It has makeup stains. It's from, you know, when you're doing your foundation, touching the beauty blender, then you got to turn it up, turn it down. Um, it's been through it all. It's got, it's been dropped in a tub. It's kind of a little busted. So, you know, it's fine. I love it. It's, it's just, it's really special to me because it's from like uh, my very first song. And I thought it was, I, I love beats and I still love them. And we have, I have so many friends over there at Apple. So I just, yeah, like this, I don't know. I've just carried it around with me everywhere. Even my manager today was like, you really, I feel like that thing has been through it. <laughs> um, and then lastly, actually, I have one more after this. Perfect. Um, this is my, I'm not really a placky shower girl, but July means a lot to me because I really feel like I found myself with this song. This also has connected me to so many fans as much as my other music really has connected me to fans because I've always written about my mental health and bad relationships and always been really, really open. But I felt like this really, really connected me to some fans that I didn't even know before. Maybe I didn't even have before because they were able to connect to me on this level and know that we were going through the same thing and that I relate to them and they relate to me. And, you know, it's kind of a beautiful thing for both of us because whenever I'm, I'm in a meeting and greeting, I hear that people are going through the same thing. It gives me so much, you know, it gives me room to breathe because I'm like, thank, thank God people are going through the same thing. I'm not, I'm not crazy. Yeah. So, can you yeah. hold it up so we can see it a little bit better? Yes. So this is the uh, platinum album for July, and now it's, it's since gone double platinum, and you have Whoa. almost a billion streams on this thing, right? How many? You're almost at a billion streams. I am? Yes, you. That's so, I mean, like, I'm like, wait, I thought you said a million, and I was like, really? I was like, a million? No, with a million. I... I think last I heard it was at like 500, maybe million streams. And I, you're, you're closer to a billion than you are to a half a million. I, you know, a billion is like more than I can really like comprehend for me to like really think that many times somebody or people have played my song, but I think really, um, it's actually you at home with your beats just hitting yeah, on repeat. I actually turn my beat on silent and then just secretly play the song. That'd be a great scam. I love it. All right. You said you had one more rock and tell item for us. Okay. So this is more just like a sweet thing that I bring around everywhere with me. This is a picture of me and my pappy. My, I don't know if you can see. Him. Yeah, we can see it. And this is like the only picture I have of us like printed out or really clear of him holding me. And he passed away when I was so young um, that, you know, there there's family pictures and stuff like that. But there was never really my picture with my pappy. And I loved my pappy so much. And so um, they put this picture in this little frame for me when I was... Honestly, I think I've had this since I was like born. I don't even know when it was given to me or anything. I just know that I love it so much. And this is the one item that I've never lost place of because it holds so much weight to me. And it even has this little crack in the corner that has its own story. And, you know, I never want the glass replaced and I never want to change the frame just because it's so special to me. And so I put it in my, my bag or um, somewhere that's like super safe and it won't get broken and I take it whenever I'm on tour and stuff. That's awesome. Congratulations on the Grammy nomination. Thank we wish so the best for you. Thank um, and thanks for spending so much time with us. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Stay safe. Thank you. You too.